Welcome back to my channel guys and today in this video we will be talking about herpes zoster ophthalmicus. The herpes zoster ophthalmicus it is an acute infection of the Cassidian ganglion of the trigeminal nerve and the infection is caused by varicella zoster virus which involves the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve. The herpes zoster ophthalmicus it constitutes about 10% of all the cases of the herpes zoster and the herpes zoster ophthalmicus it is more commonly seen in immunocompromised individuals. Now, when we talk about the etiology, the etiological agent is the varicella zoster virus and it is a DNA virus which is neurotropic in nature. And uh, this uh, virus, it also produces acidophilic intranuclear inclusion bodies. Now, when you talk about those persons who are at risk of developing this disease, um, the disease can develop in any age group, but it is most commonly seen in those individuals which have depressed cellular immunity, especially the elderly people who are suffering from disseminated tuberculosis, cancer, leukemia, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, AIDS, and organ transplant recipient patients. Now let's jump into the uh, pathogenesis. Now when you talk about the pathogenesis, the infection is acquired in the childhood in the form of chicken pox, then the individual it develops immunity, then the virus remains dormant in the sensory ganglion of the trigeminal nerve. And whenever the individual's cellular immunity is depressed, then the virus again reactivates, replicates, travels along the one or more of the branches of the ophthalmic division and produces the ocular and the cutaneous lesions. Now before talking about the clinical features, now let's talk about the trigeminal nerve. In the trigeminal nerve, it has three divisions, that is ophthalmic division, maxillary division and the mandibular division. And when we talk about the ophthalmic division, it is basically divided into three more branches, that is frontal branch, lacrimal branch and the nasociliary branch. When you talk about the clinical features, the frontal branch of the tri ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve is more commonly involved. And when you talk about the lesions, the lesions are strictly limited to only one side of the midline of the head. And the ocular complications, it occurs in around 50% of the cases. And there is a rule called Hutchinson's rule, which states that ocular involvement is more frequently seen in those individuals whose lesions are present in either side or tip of the nose. That means whenever there uh, are vesicular eruptions in the side or the tip of the nose, then the ocular involvement is frequent. Now let's talk about the clinical phase. The clinical phase of the herpes zoster ophthalmicus is divided into three phases. The acute phase lesion, chronic phase lesion and the relapsing phase lesion. When you talk about the acute phase lesions, uh, the lesions they uh, may completely resolve in a period of few weeks. But when you talk about the chronic phase lesions, the lesions may persist for years. And when you talk about the relapsing phase lesions, these lesions may either be of the acute or the chronic type and it may reoccur after several years. Let's talk about the acute phase lesions. In the acute phase lesions, there is general features. It involves cutaneous lesions, ocular lesions, and there is neurological complications. Now, when you talk about the general features, the infection is of sudden onset. There is fever, malaise, severe neurologic pain along the course of the infected nerve. And the neurologic pain is characteristic of the disease because the neurologic pain is uh, specific to the course of the uh, affected nerve. Now, when you talk about the cutaneous lesions, the cutaneous lesions, it only occur after three to four days of the onset of the disease. And the lesions are present on the area of the distribution of the affected nerve, uh, like uh, the skin of the lead and the skin of the uh, forehead uh, may be involved. And uh, when you talk about the lesions, first uh, there will be redness and uh, there will be edema of the affected area. Then there will be uh, formation of the vesicles. Then pustules will be formed in the due course of time. Then eventually the pustules will burst to form the crusting ulcers. And after some time, the uh, crust is shed and the permanent pitted scar is left behind. This is a picture of cutaneous lesion of the herpes zoster ophthalmicus. We can see that uh, the lesion is strictly limited to only one side of the midline of the head. And here the skin of the lead and the skin of the forehead is involved. 
Now, when you talk about the ocular lesions, the conjunctiva is uh, involved in the form of conjunctivitis and conjunctivitis, it is the most common lesion uh, seen and the conjunctiva uh, is involved uh, only after uh, the um, subsidence of the skin eruptions and the conjunctivitis is either mucopurulent type with a petechial hemorrhage or it is of acute follicular type with regional lymphadenopathy and rarely there can occur necrotizing membranous inflammation corneal involvement it occurs in the form of herpes zoster keratitis and these lesions may appear before the neuralgia and the skin lesions and it can occur in different forms like epithelial keratitis, pneumular keratitis, deciform keratitis and uh, keratouveitis with endothelitis. Now when we talk about the epithelial keratitis, first there is fine or coarse punctate epithelial keratitis which progress to form the microdendritic ulcer. The microdendritic ulcer here is different from that of the dendritic ulcer seen in the herpes simplex virus infection as uh, here the microdendritic ulcer is seen in the periphery of the cornea. It is of stellate shaped and it does not have bulb or knob at the end and it has tapered ends. Now when we talk about the numular keratitis, uh, it, is, uh, it occurs in the form of anterior stromal infiltrate and uh, there are tiny multiple granular, granular deposits which are surrounded by a halo of the stromal haze and uh, after healing the numular scars are left. This numular keratitis, it progresses to form the disiform keratitis and another is the keratouveitis with endothelitis. The sclera, it can be involved in the form of episcleritis or scleritis and it is seen in uh, one half of the cases. The iris is involved in the form of iditocyclitis and it may or may not be associated with keratitis and it is usually associated with uh, hyphema and uh, hypopion. The retina is involved in the form of acute retinal necrosis and uh, there may also be secondary glaucoma and the secondary glaucoma is caused in the early stage due to trabeculitis and if it occurs in the later stages then it is uh, due to the synechial angle closure. Here uh, this picture it represents uh, acute epithelial keratitis. Here this is a microdendritic ulcer. This has progressed into this. This one is the uh, numular keratitis and which progresses to form the disiform keratitis. Now when we talk about the neurological complications, the neurological complications may occur in the form of motor nerve palsies where the cranial nerve 3, 4, 6 and 7 are more commonly involved. There can also be optic neuritis or encephalitis. The encephalitis is seen uh, in um, severe cases only. Now let's talk about the chronic phase lesions. The chronic phase lesions, they are, are basically a sequel of the acute phase lesions and may persist for up to 10 years. And it includes post herpetic neurologia, lead lesions, conjunctival lesions and the corneal lesions. Now let's talk about the post herpetic neurologia. The post herpetic neurologia, it is the persistence of the pain even after the subsidence of the eruptive phase of the joster. And it occurs in about 10% of the individuals and the pain, the characteristic of the pain are it is mild to moderate in nature and it worsens at night, aggravated by touch and heat. Anesthesia dolorosa, it is a condition in which there is uh, some anesthesia of the affected skin but uh, there is continued post herpetic neuralgia in that region which is known as anesthesia dolorosa. Now let's talk about the lead lesions. The lead lesions are a sequel of scarring and it includes uh, ptosis, entropion, notching and trichiasis. When you talk about the conjunctival lesions, it is in the form of chronic mucus secreting conjunctivitis. When you talk about the corneal lesions, these are neuroparalytic ulceration, exposure keratitis, mucus plaque keratitis and there is also scleritis and uveitis. Relapsing phase lesions. Now when we talk about the relapsing phase lesions, they may reoccur even after 10 years of acute phase lesions and it includes pneumular keratitis, mucus plaque keratitis, secondary glaucoma, scleritis and episcleritis. When you talk about the treatment, it includes systemic therapy, local therapy and there is surgical therapy. When you talk about systemic therapy, it includes providing antiviral drug like uh, oral acyclovir 800 mg 5 times a day for 10 days or we can also give valacyclovir and uh, giving this uh, oral uh, antiviral drug, it um, reduces pain, it curtails vesiculation, stops viral progression and it reduces the incidence as well as the severity of the keratitis and the iritis.
for pain management we can give mifenamic acid or and paracetamol or we can give petidin in the severe cases the we should give uh, we should uh, do management of the pain because the pain if in the first two weeks of the uh, disease is very much severe to reduce the pain as well as to reduce the pruritus we can give astro antagonist that is cimetidine 300 mg qid for two to three weeks and since due to pain there can be depression so we can give amitriptyline and the steroid can be given in high dose to prevent the post herpetic neuralgia but the use of the steroid which is of high dose in the elderly should be considered now when you talk about the local therapy for the skin lesions we can use antibiotic corticosteroid cream or lotion for three times per day and calamine lotion should not be used because it promotes the crust formation when you talk about the ocular lesions for the zoster keratitis and scleritis and iridocyclitis we can use topical acyclovir 3% ointment five times a day for two weeks and topical steroid eye drops should be given four times a day and atropine that is uh, cy uh, that is cycloprasic drugs can be given for um, once a day and to prevent the secondary infection topical antibiotics can be prescribed for secondary glaucoma 0.5 percent timolol bd and oral acetazolamide should be provided for mucus place uh, mucolytic drug like acetylcysteine should be given three times a day and for persistent epithelial defect, the lubricating artificial air drop and bandage soft contact lens should be given. The surgical treatment is considered for neuropatellitic corneal ulcer and it includes various methods like lateral tarsography, tissue adhesive with bandage contact lens for perforation, amniotic membrane transplantation or the conjunctival flap for non-healing cases and keratoplasty. Thank you guys for watching my video.